Hello, everybody. Um, if you haven't got this app yet, go um, scan that QR code. Um, at the end of the talk, I'll give you another code to scan. And in the middle, there's another one as well, but not for this purpose. Um, so you can claim some points and then go to the SSW booth and uh, yeah, go and claim a prize. There's some cool um, uh, charging cables with LED displays on it, or LCD displays. Show you the, the wattage and there's cups and all sorts of cool stuff to grab. So uh, anyone still trying to grab this? Let's see a couple of phones up. All right, one more. Cool, there we go. So um, welcome to my talk. Uh, it's all about unleashing the power of microservices using DAPA and Azure Container Apps. So my name is William Liebenberg. I'm a solution architect at SSW. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. I've got a blog site that, yes, I'll start updating that one day. It's a little bit out of date. But um, you can also find me on LinkedIn uh, to have a chat. But well, my background is I started coding when I was uh, quite little. Uh, but yeah, just playing around on a Spectre video, 328. Some of you might know what that's like, like an old Commodore 64 era kind of thing. Um, but then sort of started doing things seriously in 1999. Uh, played in the 3D game development space. And that was all with C and C++. And then, you know, .NET 1 came around. It's like, ah, what's this crazy new tech? Uh, it's not going to last. V2 came out, and I've been on pretty much ever since. You know, built my whole career on that since, since 2006. Same with Azure. I've uh, been on... Azure pretty much every day since 2014, and uh, every week I play with pretty much all these things and more. Might have to make a bit more room because I'm going to add Dapper to that as well. And uh, yeah, so I guess we've all deployed something to production, right? So owning one piece of software, there's a lot of problems that you have to take care of, a lot of concerns like you know, the complexity, uh, how your app is discovered, the dependencies that it has. Uh, debugging it and deploying it, security, resiliency, observing it, scaling the cost, plus a whole lot more, right? So that's one piece of software. Then you need to do microservices, you're compounding all these problems on top as well. So it's just growing lots and lots of things to take care of. So yeah, that's painful, right? It, you, you know that you're going to be in trouble and uh, you're going to probably work a lot harder than you should to, to keep this thing running. So. There's a lot of stuff to look at. I'm going to try and focus just on a few of these today with Dapper and Azure Container Apps. Um, so we'll sort of see what that's like. Uh, but, but all of those things, all of the other illities and problems that you can have, um, there's a solution for those with this cool combination. So we've gone away and we've contrived up some cool little shop that we want to use to, to sell our wares. And you know we can compete with eBay and Amazon and all those other sites. So it's all microservices because we want to be agile, we want to scale. You know, many teams working on this, all the promises of microservices. Um, so you see this uh, diagram a few times today. You might already spot some problems and go, William, what were you thinking? Yeah, microservices have their own database, but there's a database in the middle between some of them. Okay, it's okay. I'll show you why it's okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, some people might still have a, a strong opinion on that. So this is a logical view of the, the system that we're going to look at during uh, this talk. So as the agenda, so just going to quickly cover the important concepts or what is Azure Container Apps, what is Dapper, and then obviously how do we use Dapper to build one or more microservices, and then combining that with Azure Container Apps. Um, Plus, there's quite a lot of demos in here as well, so uh, I'll be jumping backwards and forwards into code uh, and the slides. Anyone use container apps already? Yep, two, three, four. Oh, wow. Uh, quite funny. Uh, I think this is going to soon take over the, uh, the standard offering, like the Azure App Services. And uh, you'll hear me talk about sidecars. And just last night, the App Service team announced sidecar pattern for app services. So if you know what that is, yeah, cool. <laughs> but things are sort of going to start uh, blending together in the, in the near future, I think. 
So ACA, or Azure Container Apps, is a flexible serverless container app environment. I'll show you what that really means shortly. But essentially, under the hood, it's Kubernetes. But yeah, we, we don't have to use Kubernetes ourselves. It's taken care of for us. It's all managed for us. It's got auto-scaling. Yeah, so the serverless idea is that it goes down to zero to n. Yeah, yeah. Some people might argue what serverless is, but really the definition is one to n is not serverless. Zero to n will be serverless. If there's no server, that's what it means. Um, and this is done with uh, KEDA, which is the Kubernetes event-driven autoscaler. So uh, we can program in a whole bunch of um, metrics or triggers for um, how to scale our application. You know, there's, there's tons and tons of scalers available for KEDA, and it just quickly can scale out your container apps. Uh, so the level C1 routing um, is backed up by Envoy. It's pretty cool, very complicated uh, beast. It's, uh, um, we won't be using that today, we are using something a bit different. But the big win for Azure Container Apps is it comes with managed Dapper. So if you've ever tried Dapper yet, running it on a VM or running it in Kubernetes, yeah, that's very painful. Plus then all the microservice problems as well. So this is a very, very nice middle ground for me to say, okay, if I'm going to build microservices with Dapper, I can use Container Apps because it takes away quite a lot of headaches for us. Um, and just the promises of ACA is that, it, again, it's one of those things that, it, because of the serverless nature, um, you just get to focus on taking care of your applications and not so much the infrastructure underneath. Um, and all the apps, they're running a, a boundary, a sort of a network boundary, that uh, you can choose what's public and what's private, um, especially in microservices, that's important. Um, and uh, yeah, so you can choose public-private endpoints, and lots of other deployment strategies, you know, zero downtime deployments. It, it really is one of the better offerings out there to try and do all these different patterns. And you can try it with um, app services. Obviously, you can do it with Kubernetes, but everything there is quite a lot of work. Um, ACA, again, is a very nice middle ground to be able to do this. Plus, there's a whole lot more. Um, so I'm not going to cover all of that for container apps today, but um, I'll quickly show you what what it looks like in the Azure portal, if you haven't seen it yet. Okay. Uh, okay, <laughs> I was in here just before. Ah, it logged me into the wrong tenant. Okay, let me just fix that. All right, okay. Security right, here we go and a thumbprint. Okay. Again? Uh, yeah, it's all part of the plan. Aha, all right, this is better. Yes, okay. Um, so, uh, I guess most people haven't seen container apps yet, so uh, this is inside of a resource group, and I'm gonna hide that away. And what you get in here is all your resources, you know, app insights is the usual thing. Uh, the main thing that for container apps is the container app environment. We go in here, we can see uh, Kira, Dapper, you know, we've got some managed versions there for us. Um, and we go down the side, a whole bunch of stuff, Dapper components, there's a section here for components. I'll cover this a bit later as well. Um, so I'll explain what all this means. But you can go down and see, oh, here's all of the, the apps that we have deployed into our um, uh, environment. So I've got a whole bunch of those services you saw in that picture. They're already deployed here in Azure. Um, and what I might do, um, I'm going to go just quickly show you the app. I'm going to give you the URL so you can actually try it out yourself. All right, part of the plan because there's nothing at that base route. So you have to go to slash API. There we go. All right, it's working. So I'm just going to quickly. Uh, there we go. Let's do that. We'll download that, make that bigger. Cool. You guys want to try, just scan that, try it out. And then, uh, yeah, if it doesn't work, let me know. But <laughs> maybe we can debug it on the fly. All right. Cool. Hang on, I'll wait some more. Okay. 
Oh, oh, you missed it, JK. You really want it? Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. So, just in a nutshell, Azure Container Apps is super cool. Uh, if you take anything away from this, or you know, not, not cool and dapper yet, try ACA. It is awesome. But yeah, you're going to make it even cooler with dapper. But what is dapper? I'm not talking about the, the six layered ORM. Okay? Who thought this was about the ORMs or uh, Azure and databases? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's not that one. Okay? But they, it's also pretty cool. Dapper, six layered dapper, it's awesome. The four layered dapper, is a distributed application runtime. Yeah, we're talking distributed systems, microservices, same thing. Um, especially for event-driven uh, microservices. Uh, we'll see all these components that help uh, make this happen uh, as well. It's in the top 10 of the CNCF, or the, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation projects. So it graduated from the um, incubator program a little while ago, a few thousand um, contributors. Oops. So if you go to the website there, it's got a lot of cool info about it. Uh, they've just updated the site as well. Um, and this is a project that came out of Microsoft as well. Um, oh, it made it look a lot different than before. OK. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of stories there, uh, which I haven't read all these. These are new ones, but they look cool. That was very cool. Mm, I might replace some of this with my slides with some of this. But um, yeah, you can go and click on Get Started. and It'll tell you how easy it is to, to do things, but I'm going to show you instead. Okay, so let's get back to the slides. But I'm just going to summarize my top three, why I think Dapper is cool. We all like to write against some sort of abstraction. You know, you want to encapsulate an idea or have some basic interface you want to work with, because you know, potentially down the track, you might have to replace that with something else. And technology rusts, but your ideas don't. So you want to work against some sort of abstraction. And Dapper provides a really cool interface uh, to be dealing with these common microservice concerns. Um, and then this really does let you forget about infrastructure specifics in your code or in your application. You don't believe me? I'll show you. Uh, and then, again, we've all heard about infrastructure as code. It's really cool, right? But let's say we've got a, a service bus, Azure service bus. But we have to now swap that out uh, for RapidMQ. Cool, that's fine. We can do it with infrastructure as code. But I have to change my application as well. I have to rebuild or redeploy my application. It's not really the same application anymore, right? So we like to have a build artifact and promote it to any other environment. But in this scenario, when you swap infrastructure, we still have to rebuild the app. So anything can go wrong between one build and another build, right? We've all been there. But the way that the the infrastructure is abstracted away from our application with Dapper. It is really, you don't have to rebuild your application because all those infrastructure concerns are completely outside of your app. And all of that you know, put together, uh, I can just write software and focus on those business problems that I'm trying to solve. Uh, you can run anywhere that there's Kubernetes, container apps, or even other clouds, you can run Dapper. You can run on a local machine, which we'll do today. You can run on a VM, same thing. Um, and it is multilingual. So there's SDKs for .NET, Java, et cetera, even JavaScript lately. Uh, I'm not sure why it exists for PHP, but I'm sure some WordPress dev might uh, think it's a cool idea to do some distributed computing. Yeah. Uh, C++, C++ and Rust is, is there, but it's experimental. Um, just, yeah, uh, there's something there for everyone. Now we're going to hear a lot about uh, building blocks and components. So these are the, the, the ideas that those abstractions I, I mentioned earlier. And it's going to remove all the vendor specific stuff. So if you're not talking about something Azure specific or AWS Google specific, you're just talking about the idea of pub sub or state, those abstractions. And the whole Dapper um, system is built on the, the sidecar architecture. And essentially that is a separate process or a separate application running next to your application. So like I said, uh, building blocks takes care of some of these common challenges. Uh, we'll look at those, but you can think of uh, 
these building blocks, they're just APIs, okay? Between your application and the sidecar, they just talk to each other with HTTP or gRPC um, calls. By default, I think it's gRPC. Uh, why? Uh, lightweight binary format uh, packing, so low latency, high throughput. So communication network overhead, yeah, gRPC is great to reduce that a little bit. Okay, so building blocks of service to service uh, uh, communication, right? Again, HTTP or, or gRPC, when one service wants to talk to another service, you need to know their host name, their port, all that kind of stuff. But with Dapper, you don't really need to know that. You give it a logical name. So in our diagram that we had before, we had a cart service and I had a user service. Well, you just say, I want to talk to the user service. And then Dapper somehow, under the covers, works out how to get to that service. So that service discovery is built into Dapper and the sidecars take care of that. We'll show you. Uh, state management, you can think of like uh, key value stores. So Cosmos DB is good for that, Bob Storage, Redis. Yeah, SQL Server can do that, just table with a couple of columns, right? Key value. Um, but most people, for some reason, think if you want to store key value, they have to go to one of these crazy solutions, uh, which obviously work. But yeah, you can use SQL Server pretty much everywhere as well. Pub sub, uh, sending messages or publishing events. Uh, you can back that up with uh, things like Azure Service Bus, Kafka, RabbitMQ, uh, quite a lot more. Bindings. Uh, this is a special one. Uh, with, with all these other building blocks, it's abstractions. You're not dealing with a vendor-specific thing, but sometimes you have to. But you can have a binding in your application to something like SendGrid, but you're not going to have a dependency on a SendGrid SDK in your application. And I'll show you how that works. There's a whole bunch of other ones as well. Um, and you know, when we talk about these building blocks, there's heaps of them. Um, state management, pub sub, binding, actor pattern, uh, a way to do observability, managing secrets, um, configuration, uh, all that stuff. Workflows, if you've used durable functions, it's pretty much the same API, and quite a lot of the same people that worked on durable functions who worked on that too. So <laughs> uh, you, you'll, you'll see what I mean if you get your hands on it. So here, just, just straight from the docs, right? So my application, that big blue one. Next to it is the Dapper sidecar. And the sidecar is the thing that provides access to those um, building blocks. All right, so it knows uh, when it needs to do some state-related operations, the configuration for that will, will take care of sending or receiving information from one of those services and relay that back to your application. Yeah. There's actually a lot more than 100 components available now, um, and it's all listed on the website. But essentially, just at the rawest form, between my app and the sidecar, it's just HTTP or gRPC calls. So you can't really write a gRPC call, so using the, the, the HTTP or the REST version. So to, to invoke a method, if I want to call a, an endpoint on another service, so you call this port 3500, which is actually the sidecar. By default, it runs on 3500. So my app is only talking to the sidecar. It says, sidecar, invoke the new order method on the card service. So it goes and does it. It finds the cart service and uh, makes a call there, gets a result, and funnels that back to my application. Yes, Lucky? Does that mean you have, do you have, if I was to have five containers, would I have five different stores that were running for each one? Right? Yes. Okay, so the question was, if you have five apps or five services running, will you have another five? Uh, the same. Oh, if you have five instances of the same application, um, no, you'll have one because the Dapper sidecar can load balance for you as well. It's, that's one of the other features that it can do. Uh, not talking about it in here, but yes. So you can load balance that as well. And the sidecars themselves can scale out and this, get crazy. <laughs> is, this, is this why Dapper came into existence? Because of the multiple of the scaling? Ooh, I'm, 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 yeah. You haven't heard of Dapper before containers. Um, I think the timing, yeah, if you look back at when Dapper started, containers were well and truly a thing. 
But the pattern, the sidecar pattern and all that is a long, long time ago. It's just another process. It doesn't mean it has to be a container, okay? It's just another .NET app or IS app or a, a Express. Uh, is, it, is it just to have very, very loosely coupled? Oh, yeah, so well, you're going a couple of slides ahead, but that, you're right. It, is, it helps with this loosely coupling, uh, uh, loose coupling of things in our application. And there's a slide for that, so we'll get to that. Um, so, but yeah, there's a lot of cool features in there in Dapper can load balance, but it's a very basic sort of uh, round robin and a few other things. Um, if you want to do real load balancing, use something like uh, Yarp or uh, Envoy, far more advanced. Uh, yeah, but it can do it. Yeah. Um, so, just other examples here, like if you want to get some state from a store, it's just another HTTP call uh, to the right thing, and it just works out for you where, where to get stuff from. It's really, really simple. So, here is that loose coupling, right? So here's my application running on the left-hand side. That's just my application code. You can know, almost say pure business logic. And then in the sidecar, on the other side, that Dapper API, it has all the dependencies of being able to talk to another um, service. It knows how to talk to a blob storage. It can talk to Redis. It can talk to um, app insights, whatever. All that lives outside of my application. Is not inside of my app. So then if you look, zoom out a little bit more, so you've got all these different microservices with their sidecars running. None of the services talk to each other directly. It's the sidecars that do all the work. So you can see the arrows are clearly just between the, the sidecars. Nothing stops you, obviously, from yeah, this microservice can call out to anything else. Right? It's just the sidecar is just there to help communicate within that microservice ecosystem, but you can still make outbound calls to whatever you want to do. And then just going a little bit further, so now you have two apps, your front end app and a back end application. And they both have their sidecars running. But each of these sidecars, you know, all these different concerns, you can choose which components to add to that sidecar. And that comes from these components files. And then what does it look like? Well, YAML's everywhere, so why not here? Um, so here's a very basic example of a component, a state component. And importantly, there's this, what ties this to my application is that metadata name. So very creatively, I call it Dapper Shop State Store. And next up for that is the spec type. So I'm saying this is a state.redis. That's the identifier to say I want to use Redis. And then the following metadata underneath that is how to configure that component or how to configure the, the sidecar to communicate with that Redis instance, okay? So now if I only go look at swapping that out, the same state store, and I can use Cosmos DB. And then all the metadata underneath is different, but specifically to how to connect my sidecar to a Cosmos DB instance. Now don't worry, there's secrets in there, but you can actually wire it up to a secrets provider so that you don't have secrets in your YAML files. Yeah, don't be like that guy. I, I did that with SendGrid, committed my component, they picked it up, now I don't have a SendGrid account anymore. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know if that's happened to anyone yet, but it's very hard to get your SendGrid account reactivated. Uh, okay, so one other example, PubSub, right? Same thing, that metadata name, Dapper shop pub sub uh, is of type Redis. So you can use Redis for state. It's got a, a pub sub feature built into it, right? It's got a few other things in there. So Redis is like a golden hammer. I guess you can use it everywhere. But uh, yeah, uh, we don't always like to use Redis. So let's use something a bit more appropriate for, for pub sub. So we can swap out again for the same name, the same thing they're going to tie into my application. Uh, I'm going to use the Azure Service Bus and connect to that in its own way. All right. So uh, it's almost like supercharged infrastructure as code, right? Because it's very easy for me just to swap out some YAML for some completely different infrastructure, but my application code doesn't change. All that it needs is that metadata name. That's it. And the concept of a, a pub sub. Um, I'll show you what that looks like shortly. So, okay, you'd roughly know what Dapper is. We talked about container apps. How do we actually start building with these things? So again, here's our application. Uh, like most good microservice systems, you have a gateway, 
And I'm not a UI dev, so I didn't put a, a UI on there. So happy swaggering. Uh, but I'm using I'm using Yarp in uh, in here for the the gateway or the reverse proxy uh, to you know route the calls to to all the different services in the background. This is quite nice, and it's even uh, you know, for each of these services that publishes their own Swagger spec, you can merge them all into one and present that one API. So they're not integrating directly to your services in the background. That's bad. So you can have the the, the gateway there and swap your services in and out. Uh, you know, who cares? You might turn one on as an actual VM instead of a container app. Who knows? Okay, so uh, this is the idea of what we're going to try and uh, put together. So to get started, I'm a .NET dev, so uh, we're going to build something with .NET. But if you want to follow along in one of the other languages, you can do that. So importantly, you have to get the Dapper CLI installed. Quite easy. Winget install Dapper CLI. But there's like five other ways to do that. So you can just check out the docs uh, and get your DAP, uh, CLI installed. You then have to initialize Dapper. What it'll do, it'll download a few containers to your machine, uh, three of them. One of them is Redis because it's everywhere. Then you get Zipkin, which is a observability uh, platform, and then the Dapper placement engine. So it's basically all the magic of, of Dapper on your machine. And then quite simply, we just go .NET new, create a web API, call it my microservice. I only have to add two packages to my app, and that's it. I'm ready to go. Uh, but not easily. <laughs> so you can't just do .NET run, because the problem here is, if I do just .NET run, it runs just my application, and not the sidecar. So I have to use the Dapper CLI to spin up the sidecar. So what this does is I say, Dapper run, and I have to give it that logical name, that app ID. So in our previous slide, each of those services has its own app ID. Um, and that is how, if you run multiple ones of those, the Dapper engine knows the ones you've spun up, they've registered themselves, with a host name and a port, all that stuff, it manages that for you. All that we would do is then talk via those logical names. Now, this is quite simple. I'm going to jump past this one. I'll go to a bigger demo and uh, show you a little bit more. So, what I want to do is I'm going to show you, I'm going to fire up our, our microservice um, uh, system and make some calls to the cart service. You know, make sure that if I want to add a product to my cart, I have to make sure that me as a customer actually exists, it's not some random person. Um, I have to make sure that the product exists, and these are direct service to service calls. Okay? So just quick direct calls, you, yeah, if you want to do Saga pattern, all that stuff, that's up to you. Quite simply, I just want to talk to another service, I need an answer right now. Uh, so then when, when I know I've validated my user, validated that the product is there, I can add it to the cart or save that state into, into my database. Then I can actually publish an event, say uh, an order was submitted. Uh, so this is what I'm going to check out. Right? I'm going to check out, create an order. Uh, the cart service doesn't care about how to make orders and ship them. It just sends a message to the bus to say, hey, uh, William's placed an order. Someone needs to take care of it. And of course, we do have a, an ordering service that listens for that uh, order submitted event. It will receive it and start processing it. Okay, uh, yeah. So let's go into the demo. So let's fire it up. Um, so what, what, what you need to do, that's the complicated version. Let me show you the first version. So I have a lot of these services, right? And that Dapper CLI to start this, uh, the, the sidecar, give it a name, and we haven't even touched on components yet, but you have to specify where the components are and then how to then launch the .NET application. It gets pretty hairy, right? So if you look at this here, that's the wrong one. Uh, can you guys read that okay? Let's make it a bit smaller. Oh, it's a bit old school, right? Old uh, uh, command file, uh, but it works. So, uh, and what this will do, it'll spin up a new terminal for each microservice. I'm going to have a bunch of these running on the screen. It's going to be horrible. But so dapper run, that's the command we want to use. We have to give an app ID for each of these. So users API, very creative. You also then have to specify 
the port that your application is going to be listening on. So this is the port number in the launch settings.json. Yeah, you see this. You have to go start digging for stuff, right? Uh, <laughs> so then specify the protocol, HTTP, HTTPS, gRPC. Then I have to say where to find the um, component specs. Right, so I've got a folder full of components. We'll check those out. And then finally, .NET run, uh, no build, because I'm doing a build here at the start. Uh, oh, for some reason I turned that off, but I should be doing that build. Then telling it which launch profile to use, because uh, you can't really rely on which one it always picks. And then just have to be very verbose and say which CS project to run. Oh, man. Well, it's, a, it's a pain. You really don't like this. So I'm not actually going to run this, which is great. With the latest version of Dapper, which only just came out a little while ago, um, there's a new feature called multi-app run. And um, it's much, much nicer than this. It's, it's almost like if you've used Project Ty and those manifest files there, it's similar to that. So we can use that. Uh, it only started working recently on Windows. Um, and not in my solution. Let me just go to the other way. Go down, go down. There it is. Um, or how can I make this big screen? Okay, so it's a little bit uh, more YAML, but it's okay. And there's a full spec on the website, so I'm just going to delete some of these things to make it a bit simpler. But you can configure, add some common configurations for all your apps to run. You know, tell them where the component files are where to save their logs, use SSL, any environment variables you want across all the apps. Uh, but each one of these apps that you then specify in here, yeah, we say the app ID, which, uh, where's the working folder, what port, again, it's the same one as the, the launch settings, and then the command for how to run it. I don't know if this is better or worse than the other one, but um, at least this will all run in one terminal for all these apps. So I've gone and specified all of those in this file, okay? Um, I was playing around with the health checks the other day, so it's a bit of uh, greenery there, but um, we'll skip that for now. So going back to the terminal here, so I want to now just run that. But the way we do that, uh, oh, sorry, that's probably a bit hard to see. See that okay? You read that? Uh, so I'm just doing a .NET build on the whole solution, cool. Um, I don't fix that. I don't know why I put a delay in there. I'll take that delay out because that's going to be quite annoying. Um, the idea is I want to build everything at once and I found a really cool tool to merge all those swagger specs into one. Previously, I wrote PowerShell to do that. Big pay to debug. So don't do this. Uh, just use that cool little uh, open API merge tool. Uh, way cooler. And I'll just take that one out. And then here, yeah, so dapper run, and then specify the manifest file to run. Okay, quite, quite simple. So let's do that. And if everything goes well, my apps will start up. And it's all this sort of normal .NET uh, console output you can see there. Luckily, my gateway is on the one of the last ones there, so I click the link. Obviously, that's not where I want it to go. I have to go to API. Boom. Okay, so now it's all running locally. And if we start making requests, we should be able to see things happening. All right, so we can see here that, uh, actually, show you here. So the request, the curl, went to my reverse proxy, which or my gateway, which is running on port 7192. All right, that's a bit small. And so it hit that 7192 on the user's route and then gave it some arguments to, to get the, the result back. But that's not quite the same as what I showed you earlier because this, there's no slash invoke, service name, method, all that that's missing there. So this is where Yarp comes in. And uh, I'll show you how that works in a minute. But for all of our other services, the same sort of thing, the, um, each of these APIs, I'm just going to go here. Mm -hmm. Oops. Yeah, coding and looking backwards is like driving and looking backwards. You shouldn't do it. 
Um, yeah, same thing, right? So I'm actually just calling on the slash products, products route, uh, then the catalog endpoint. So it's a bit of magic happening here. Um, and that's, that's from Yarp. So basically, if you haven't seen Yarp before, with a reverse proxy, yet another reverse proxy, uh, I'll do it in Visual Studio, um, wherever that went. Here we go. I just want to quickly point this out so you understand all the um, configuration in here. So you can specify, uh, skip that one. So here's the, the, the standard configuration for YARP. So you can specify your routes. For instance, I'm saying here, uh, my user API route, uh, it's got a cluster that it has to hit um, uh, 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 at the end, it will forward to this particular cluster. But I want to transform this. So that post, the invoke method I showed you at the beginning, you can do it that way, or you can actually add a header that call, uh, that's called dapper app ID. That one there. And then you can specify the value as the user's API. So any route that matches on the user uh, user's route, uh, forward it to the um, user's API. Um, so I had the user's API as the, the header, and I'm hitting this localhost 3500. That's my sidecar cluster. So any request to my gateway uh, that I want to send out will hit the sidecar, and because I've got the header name for which service I want to hit, sidecar goes, mm -hmm, I know where it is. I'll go hit the, the, the other sidecar and get it to do stuff, and I'll get the, request, the response back and, and push it back into uh, the original caller. So a little bit complicated story, but it works really well. So, um, and now I'm quite, e quite easily able to add more services and configure the routing with Yarp and how it works locally, uh, and push that out to Azure, it's the same thing. Um, so uh, yeah, so the, the, the API gateway sort of uh, complicates the story a little bit in terms of the routing, but it's quite nice. Now what I actually wanted to show you in here as well, so we can see from the logs, which is here, I think, yeah. So we've got all our apps running, and there's, there's tons and tons of output normally. And so if I go back in here, I want to say, um, what am I going to do? I want to add some items to my cart. Actually, first, what's in my cart? Let's see if I've ordered something yet. Nope, I need to give it a name. Okay. Uh, Oh, already, I've got a slice of bread in there. Actually, I've got five slices of bread in my cart. That's, that's a lot of bread. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's add something else. Let's see. All right, I'm going to add something else here. So I want to add in uh, for my name. I'm going to add in a different product ID. And I want just one of those. OK, cool. Did that. Got a response of 200. We can look at the logs and see a few things have happened. You know, I've got some logs here. Product ID 2 is valid. Yeah, William is valid, okay. Um, so then if I go here, just do the full cart request. Okay, cool, it's working. Cool, so I got bread, oh, it's cheese, okay. That's good, good combo. Probably need more cheese for that amount of bread, but whatever. Um, right, so running all these sidecar, sidecars and, and, and apps, but one thing we really need to take care of is debugging, right? Like, I started all of this and, None of this will work in Visual Studio. I can't just go to five. Because Visual Studio doesn't know how to spin up the sidecars and apps and make it all work. Um, so we want to debug the apps. How do we do that? So, but before I show you that, sorry, I got sidetracked. I want to show you the components. So in, in, in our app here, here's the components folder and here's PubSub. So just like the, the example earlier, I'm specifying for this Dapper Shop pub sub to use Redis and how to connect to it. I've got a send grid that unfortunately now doesn't work. Uh, then I've got a local secrets file. So any like the, the secrets I'm going to use for, for uh, Cosmos DB for my state store, I can I can actually reference out of the, the state store, the secrets, the local secret store. And you do that with a secret key ref. So you can commit this you don't have to commit this JSON file. So I've got a secrets.json file somewhere, which actually is here. 
but that doesn't go to source control, so I'm safe. Uh, you grab that key, it won't work. <laughs> um, okay, so just basic here, right? So this is uh, components for my local setup. So very easily I can swap that out for stuff that runs in Azure, but we'll get to that later. Uh, so I'm gonna now, because I've got all those things running, I actually wanna go and attach my debugger to those. Actually, if you don't know where to get that, uh, let's go to debug, attach to process. You can do all of this obviously in VS Code and Rider, um, but I've named all my services appropriately. And I can then go, actually let's make it a bit shorter. Yeah, so here's all the services I have running. So I want to attach to all of them at once. Sweet, let's do that. So that takes a moment, and then you should be able to see here that we actually have stuff happening. Cool? Okay. Oh, that's covering the whole screen. Let me just move that down a bit. So now when I'm looking at uh, one of the things we did, so before I actually add something to my cart, for some reason it was adding more than one. So I say one, but it's adding two. Let's say um, we want to debug that method. I know it happens in here. Cool. So let's just go and mm, that way. Here we go. So I want to add something to my cart. So I'm going to add another slice of cheese. Boom. Okay. We're back in Visual Studio land. So now I can debug multiple microservices. And what's happening here is yeah, I'm using a HTTP client that I set up earlier uh, to talk to the product service. Right now I'm in the cart service. So I've got one here, I'm using uh, the .NET 8 keyed, keyed services to inject that client, so I, I crafted it up earlier. And the way I do that is here, using the DAPA client interface. So I just want to create a HTTP client that points to that logical service, that app. App ID name. So I want to have one for products and I want to have one for users API. And so when that gets injected, I can just use it like any other normal HTTP client. Under the hood, you'll probably, um, you can go and inspect that. We've got a few interesting things, but that's, it's just like making a normal call, but under the hood Dapper uh, has a, there's a new little message handler that, uh, what's it called? Message, yeah, one of those, uh, that takes care of the service discovery for us. So we can just start debugging like normal and say, oh yeah, uh, the product ID is valid, trying to find the user. Oh, I've got a breakpoint here in my user service. And so if I want to step into that, I can then go, okay, uh, and get some state. And I'll, I'll talk about this Dapper client in a sec, but essentially we're just getting some user information from the state store and off we go. So we can debug microservices, awesome. And we should be able to see some of the output in Visual Studio, even though it's not awesome, but it's there, all right? So all the things we want that we normally do you can still do, it's just one extra hop to get it started in Visual Studio. All right, I'm gonna turn these off. And continue. All right, turn that one off. There's a few more, so you get the idea. And feel free to ask questions while I'm demoing this, by the way. Um, now, in Visual Studio, what I wanna show you is, is really how easy it is to get started with, with Dapper. So you can see, we can run multiple apps, we can debug them, we attach them, debug them. Um, and all we have to do for our app, when we create it, add two package references to Dapper ASP.NET and uh, Dapper Client. Without uh, the Dapper Client library, you have to do those manual HTTP requests to your sidecar. This is just the, a library that helps for you to talk to your sidecar, okay? And all that we need to do to activate it is that line there. It's still a bit, can you guys see that okay? All right, so I add my client, I set up some service discoveries, uh, all the other things, I've got App Insights in there, blah, blah, set up my Swagger stuff, etc. And then of course I'm gonna map my uh, minimal endpoint routes. So I've got some uh, or minimal API endpoints. So I'm just setting up the, the calls here to call my little service. So I'm not doing any clean architecture or anything in here. It's more of a, a GSD architecture gets him something demonstrated. Um, so in my cart service, oh, don't do that. In the cart service, so very simply, yeah, we're using a HTTP client already. 
Um, and then here's that dapper client, right? So I'm injecting the dapper client at the, the top. So it's just uh, dapper client. And there it is, just like any other thing you want to uh, inject. So we can use that. And quite simply, if you look at the interface, that works. Here is all those building blocks, all those abstractions that we, we talked about earlier that you can use. Your health checks are there, you can delete state, you can uh, get bulk state, get secrets, get more, go on and on. So you can evoke methods on other services. Uh, you can uh, uh, issue locks, so you can actually lock, do like transaction locking across different services on a, a particular resource. Um, you can publish events or publish your messages and query state, all that. So all those operations you want are here. And it's actually not a massive interface, but when you start using it, it covers pretty much everything you normally want to do in terms of uh, talking to your, your resources uh, and other services. Okay. And it's that, that's it. So in my application, so if I can do all sorts of things, I will never see, well, usually you won't see any more dependencies that, uh, than Dapper. Because all those Azure Service Bus or RabbitMQ, whatever you want to use, blob storage, that's on the sidecar in Dapper. So they have those problems. We don't have those problems. So and if I go into my components file and I change my state store from, oops, if I change my state store from Cosmos to Redis, and I restart the sidecar, this just works with zero change to my app. So you can imagine a little bit uh, step ahead. Once we build a container, we can publish that to a registry, and then we can happily reconfigure the infrastructure behind it without having to build a new container. Awesome. Okay. So now, where did the stop button go? Now everything's very small. <laughs> it's all bunched up. Where did the button go? Ah, excellent. Shift F5. Why did I not know that? Cheers. <laughs> All right. Uh, so now I'm happy to uh, I'll close Visual Studio and uh, yeah, not make any changes. Cool. Any questions so far? Does that will make sense. So, yes, sir. So, they So with Dapper, um, the question is if it provides, a, it's the wrapper around all those bits of infrastructure, those real things. And if there's a change in something like Azure Service Bus, et cetera, how does Dapper deal with that? That's a question, right? So they will publish new versions every now and then. And uh, it's really up to you to sort of keep your Dapper version also up to date. But in Azure Container Apps, we'll get there shortly, that the versions manage. So they pin a particular version. So if you stay along with the version that's in Container Apps, so for instance, right, right now, today, uh, Dapper is at 1.12, but we've only got 1.11 in Azure Container Apps. 1.11 to 12 is quite a big change in Dapper. So I haven't, I haven't shipped that yet. So um, just be mindful of that. But they do take care of those changes. And yeah, they're, they're, it's a, still part of the Microsoft team in a way. And so they're pretty connected to the changes and make sure that it stays up to date. And of course, it's open source you can go and fix it yourself. <laughs> you can add your own components. Oh, but that's the thing. You can write all your own bindings and components and everything in there. Uh, it's, the community is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, join them on Discord. It's pretty awesome. Yes, Lucky. What if I want to do something that's like Redis specific? I know maybe that defeats the point. No, no, no. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. So what if you want to do something that's Redis specific? I have a slide for that. <laughs> no, but quite short answer is, so I'm using, say, Cosmos DB for my state store, right? I'm going to show you. So um, where did that thing go? Oh, usually there's that icon. Um, so I'm using Cosmos locally for the state store. And um, in, in the app, you just saw that I'm using like dot get state, dot save state. It's quite basic, so I want to make sure you can see that. So yeah, here's my products. Here's my user. Oh, yeah, we'll get back to another point. but. Uh, the querying API to get stuff, say I'm using Cosmos, it's very basic compared to what I can do with a, a SQL query. 
Okay? Or, or even with the radius, etc. Yes, so if you feel like you're not able to harness the true power of this certain thing that you want, that's a conscious choice that you probably will take on that dependency in your app. Like that's some pillar of your, your system that's probably not going to go away. Like you can't do without Redis and you, or you can't do without Cosmos, etc. So it's a conscious to choice. I would start with the basic abstract abstraction. And if you really, really need to, you can take on that dependency. It's like all those other, should I use Mediator or should I use Automapper? <laughs> like all those same considerations. But uh, this is a very nice, quick and easy way to get started. And you, know, you should have a fair bit of fun with it. Um, so I just want to make another point. So you remember earlier where I had a couple of services sharing a database? So this is, this is why. So you can see here that the key is actually the app ID and a couple of pipes is more, more information that go in the middle there. But my product service can't query stuff that was owned or, or set by my cart service. Or my user service can't go and dig into Cosmos and ask for stuff that's in the product service. So the, the state uh, building block or, or state management building block uses the keys and stuff to isolate information, sort of keeps it a little bit clean for you. Not that you should do this, and that say it's not saying that's a really good thing to colo all your data in one store, but you can, and that actually makes it quite easy and quite safe, because you don't get to control that ID easily in the app. Okay? Make sense? Cool. Yes, sir? Uh, yes. So with, the, with, with Dapper, the nice thing is, because you, you want to test your business logic mainly, and the infrastructure is quite abstracted. So you can actually find all the local equivalents. So let's say we like Azure Service Bus. You can't run it locally. You can't run it easily in the CI. You can do all the fa fancy things with crazy topics and filters to, to try and use it. Uh, but you can say run Rabbit uh, MQ or Redis in your CI. You know, spin it up with uh, uh, a container uh, and just con connect to that with. It's just a dapper run type approach. Basically, yes. Yeah, so you can run the sidecar, set up the whole um, ecosystem, and then run your tests. It's, yeah, for me, it's that straightforward. I haven't really had any issues doing that. Because, um, yeah, I like Cosmos in, in, in Azure most of the time, but locally, uh, it's either SQL Server or um, Redis, even. It's easy. Yeah. yeah, the Cosmos container is a bit hard to spin up sometimes. It's too many ports and other issues. But uh, yeah, that story is totally fine. I've not had any problems with that. Okay, so need to mo move on quickly. So let's go back to the slides. Um, where did that go? Yeah, all right. So here we go. So this is, this is the, the sort of little shop microservice system we built up and it's quite, um, Look, it's probably not as simple as it should be, but hey, it works. Um, now, the dev and debugging, little paper cuts. .NET Aspire, I've already played with it with Dapper, super awesome, actually solves this problem for me. So F5 out of Visual Studio is now, like is in really today, because preview three is, is today. Uh, but that's really, really nice. So if you haven't used .NET Aspire, go and use that. If you haven't used Dapper, use it together with Aspire. It'll take that little, emoji and, and turn it the, the right way around. Uh, but all those other things, if you're on a Mac or Linux, uh, works really well. I haven't mean, had any issues on there. It's, it's a slightly better experience on those platforms to, to work. There's a VS Code add-in that works really well, better on those other two platforms, unfortunately. Um, you can also use Docker Compose to spin up all those things as well, but it's a headache to set up. There's quite a lot to maintain, and it's not something you're going to ship to production with this either. So I opt not to bother with that one. There's a little sidekick project uh, that instead of the Dapper CLI starting up the sidecar and then your app, you can start your app to kickstart the sidecar. <laughs> uh, so you put a little thing in your app to spin up the sidecar, but it's a little bit hit and miss. Um, and it's a little bit old now, so I haven't maintained that for like two years. But it still you know, sometimes works. It just depends. You, know, you can try it out. So we just quickly looked at the um, Dapper SDK, so you can do service to service calls quite easily. They just invoke a client with an app ID. It takes care of the service discovery for you. State management, get state, save state. There is a query state uh, method. You can publish events. Oh, and you can listen to events as well. You can subscribe to them uh, on a topic. I'll quickly show you that because it's quite important. Um, 
uh, where did we go? Uh, I'll just open a new one. So yeah, I'll we'll have to get to the container apps part as well shortly. So go with topic. Only two minutes. That's all right. I don't know why keyboard's not working. Okay. So you can subscribe to events with the <laughs> with topic. And so what I want to show you as well with the send grid thing is we can actually, uh, once an order has been completed processing, so I've put a, an order into the, the system, it will process it, take a bit of time, pick the thing off the shelf, put it in a box. And then I wanted to use a binding to send an email to my user uh, via SendGrid. Um, but yeah, I lost my SendGrid account. <laughs> but it is very simple. So you can get the code for all of that. Now, like I said, Dapper and Container Apps, match made in heaven. Uh, so this, this system that we built, right, locally, was running all .NET, and I was basically using Redis and Cosmos emulator everywhere. But in cloud, uh, I'll swap that over to running on Azure Container Apps, swapping out Redis for Cosmos DB and Azure Service Bus. So basically, I can use that same container and just swap the infrastructure quite easily. Now, the full, full story is you can start in your, writing your code, push it to GitHub, build a container, ship it to ACR, and that automatically can then uh, update for you in Azure Container App. So it's a pretty s slim uh, way of, of getting code from your machine to cloud. So I'll quickly show you uh, in here, uh, let's go to Visual Studio Code. Uh, so the pipelines are on the repo, so you can check them out, but I want to show you that the bicep files are all there as well, so you can go and create your Azure container apps and you know, specify container names, enable Dapper. You can control the ingress and egress, sorry, the ingress for uh, public or external. Uh, there's a lot of configuration here uh, to look at. Um, you can actually so do, to, do things in two ways. So those component YAML files, you can also do them with Dapper, but you can ha take them as they are and use the Azure CLI to push that to your container app. So you don't have to use BICIP for them. I just decided to go the long way around and, and try and figure it out, but it's a very long way around. So probably not my favorite thing to do. So, but all those sort of things, you know, my send grid uh, component, all of that, you know, you can do it with BICIP, but uh, I'd, I'd probably prefer to just use the CLI and a basic YAML file. So there's a lot of BICIP stuff there. And the one thing is I wanted to show you with GitHub, uh, so I've got a workflow per app. Is that when I when I build or publish my app, you never saw a Docker file today, right? So we're running on container apps. I don't have any Docker files, but .NET Publish can actually publish or create a container for me and publish it to the container registry on my behalf. So it's quite nice and easy. Um, but by all means, if you need to use a Docker file, you can. It's just you don't really have to. So I build and publish a container. And all I then do once it's in there is to run container update or container app, container app update, give it the name, and eventually tell it which container to use on my container registry, so which image to use. And that's it. Our app is updated, so quick and easy. Okay, let's quickly wrap it up because, yeah, we're probably running close to the end. I'm going to give you a nice summary. So for me, the local dev needs to be improved a little bit, but with Aspire, I think it's a great story, so try that out. Like we said earlier, Locky, uh, if you feel like you're not able to harness the true power of whatever um, service you're using, go for it. Take on that dependency. You know, don't let this hold you back, because if you, you know more than what they do. They're just trying to cover the common scenarios. If you have something very specific, uh, go for it. A lot of the components that are on the Dapper site are in alpha stage, so just be aware that it might not go anywhere, <laughs> so, or it might be in alpha for a long time. Some of them have, especially because it's an open community. People try things out, publish them, and sometimes they just stay there and don't progress. So just be aware that when you pick one of those uh, to sort of look at what stage it's at. The pros, the upsides, good stuff. Yes, building blocks are easy. It's, it's just, I'm just writing business code. You know buying products, putting stuff in a state, reading some cart info, finding my user, it's all basic stuff. And I don't really have to care about 
wiring in service bus or Redis uh, or RabbitMQ, and I don't have any NuGet packages to worry about. So it just makes everything super easy, less complexity. Uh, less code, less NuGets, less headaches. Love that. Very easy to swap out our infrastructure, uh, supercharged IAC in my find. And just, yeah, focus on the business problems. Like, I don't have to worry about these things. It's getting us so much closer to just writing and solving business problems. And like, if you remember from the beginning, all these problems we had, right? So they're still there, <laughs> you know, but there's a big band-aid over them. So, you know, now microservices are a lot less painful. So if you want to scan that code and get some cool points for watching my talk, uh, go for it. I'll give you about five seconds before we get kicked out.